Okay, so uh, let's see, we've broken it down into four different types of starting an early spring mm -hmm. garden, and you can do any combination of these. In fact, I encourage you to do multiple of each one. I know oh, yeah. we'll be employing yep. every single one of these. But the first one is to start frost hardy veggies indoors so that you can transplant them outside really early, still in that early spring season to get a real head start on the season. These are things that maybe will grow in that frost, you know, light frost st sort of climate, but they may not germinate right. and, may, you know, they need to be a little bigger before they're ready to handle the frost. Yeah, it's going to be easier to get them up indoors yeah. and get them matured up a little bit. And yeah. this is where that planner is going to help you figure yeah. out how to do that and when to start them exactly. indoors. And, um, you know, some of the varieties that you can do this with are leeks, yeah. any kind of greens, you know, your your spinaches, your chard, your kales, yeah. um, certainly cold hardy lettuces. Most of your lettuces like cooler temperatures. Some of them can take uh, colder temperatures. Yeah. So make sure you're looking on the variety selection to say that it can handle cold temperatures. That's kind of the key, especially for the lettuce. Yeah. Yeah. Cauliflower. Yeah. Broccoli. Mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts, yeah, Brussels. cabbage, onions, mm -hmm. all of those things can be started indoors, ready to plant out you know, pretty well before your last frost day. Yeah, onions, you got to play with in your area. A lot of times you're getting, um, sorry, I lost the word, onion um, sets. Oh, when you're getting Because they're pre-started the yeah. fall before. Yeah. So just, you need to know your area and you really got to plan for those. They need to get in early if you're going to get a harvest in the same year. Yeah. For onions. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So uh, another one is to plant the frost hardy varieties right out in the garden as soon as you can, as soon as you get that soil mm -hmm. going, because there are a lot of things that will sprout in pretty cool temperatures. Yeah. Um, you know, the warmer you can get it, the better, but still, if you have them out there ready to go, mm -hmm. um, they're going to get a good start. Now, these are the varieties that aren't like that last one we talked about where they have to get started indoors and hardened off a little bit first. These varieties can actually handle that hard frost just from seedling um, stage. There we go. Right. That's the just from seedling stage. You, you can get them, plant them right out. And mm -hmm. most of these are leafy greens. Yeah. Um, your, your mustards. Specifically, the one we've had a lot of luck with and really cold is that green wave mustard. So mm -hmm. mustards are a little more heat loving. So make sure you're getting a cold, hearty variety of mustard. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Uh, mache. Yeah, the mache. You know, they're so little when they get, when they mature that I I'm not sure that they're even worth growing yeah, to tell you the yeah. truth. But they will grow <laughs> really early. So if you're just a single person or just a couple and you just want a little garnish of green somewhere, the mache, also known as the corn salad, is uh, you know a good way to go. Yeah. My personal favorite, spinach. Yes. It comes up early. I love the thickness of the leaves. It's great yeah. cooked. It's great raw, however mm -hmm. you want to have it. And it's just super easy to grow. So if yeah. you're looking for a place to start and you want to make it easy, you can plant a ton of spinach and get it going early. Yeah. yeah. The arugula can go in as soon as the soil can be worked. So mm -hmm. that's a really good one to start with too. Yeah. Uh, fava beans and a lot of kales fall into this department too. They can just get direct sown right into the soil. Yeah. We should so. do more kales. I have a hard time with kales. So <laughs> it's just not my favorite. Not, not your favorite in the kitchen, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. So there are some things you can do to even get ahead of the spring, and that is to plant the winter before. It depends a lot on your climate, what you can get away with, because in some places you can get away with starting your peas the winter before mm -hmm. and having them start to grow. But if you're going to get really hard freezes throughout the winter, you may not be able to do that. And it may limit you to things more like garlic, the really hardy leeks mm -hmm. and things like some fava beans that'll start in the winter and come back really early in the spring. Well, and another one we don't have on here though is your carrots, getting your carrots in season before and yeah. having carrots to harvest as soon as things start. A to lot fall. of the root vegetables can handle the, the freezing throughout yeah. the winter. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point. You want to play with the varieties and find a variety that works well for you in your area. Right. But, so um, those are good ones to have on there. And as soon as, I mean, even through the winter, our, our ground freezes hard. So we don't do a lot of that mm -hmm. um, because we're not going to go out and just harvest throughout the winter. There's yeah. just no point in that point in that snow's too deep. But you can leave them there. And so when things start to thaw, you've got some produce right there in the garden ready to harvest. And that can be really mm -hmm. important for that early spring season because, you know, that's when typically 
you're really low on stocks. Mm -hmm. That's when you really need the food, right? Yeah. It's in the spring. Your your pantry's already run down to nothing, and it's going to be you know a month or two yet before the garden's producing. And so that's great to have some veggies that are ready. You can just go harvest them as soon as yeah. the ground's thawed. Yeah, absolutely good. And number four, getting your early spring perennials in, and so basically just perennials, having kitchen perennials, perennials yeah. in the kitchen garden, excuse me, cottage garden, mm -hmm. uh, right close. Yeah, that's going to be things like your asparagus, your rhubarb, your sorrel, good King Henry, lovage, all the things that are just going to pop up first thing in the spring and just start growing because they have that root mass that has, you know, taken in all that energy from the last year and is ready to expend it even before it gets warm. I know that I can be hard harvesting my sorrel from the garden before we can even generally be planting spinach seeds outside. I was going to say, really, this is the most overlooked mm -hmm. and the lowest work, easiest yeah. growing method. You just have to dedicate space because it is, you know, perennial. So you're not going to be turning that over yeah. or swapping out. But this is really the most overlooked system mm -hmm. is these perennial greens. And it's hard for us to do enough. Yeah. Honestly, in our <laughs> for space. our we family. Need huge yeah. patches, but a lot of you with smaller families families could grow a lot of these vegetables and they're coming up early and they're adapting to the climate yep. and they're just going to be the fastest up. And uh, so start, start creating a space in your garden for more and more perennials, preferably close to the house, close to the kitchen. Yeah. You can get it. Yeah, that would absolutely be right. So, um, you know, that if you start doing those four different types of things, you are going to have food probably six weeks to eight weeks before you're going to be getting it out of your your main crop garden. That's a lot of time that you're going to be eating fresh food out of the garden. Yeah. So that's a really exciting thing. And we totally encourage you guys to be um, taking those steps and getting your spring gardens in looking if you can do it right now. Some of you can do it absolutely right now. Yep.